It's yeah. funny because over in Israel, because they're not used to my name, Snowflake Black, because it's huh. a one, they always call me Snowflake, which to me is a very different connotation. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Canoe Creative Spotlight. As always, I'm your boy, Chris. The scenery has obviously changed, but the mission has not. And today I am bringing another amazing creative from around the world straight to you that you never knew could be around you. We're talking to Mr. Ross Allen, AKA Snowflake Black of Lucille Crew. He is a songwriter and artist, and he's here to talk to our audience. Thanks for talking to us today, Ross. Pleasure to be here, Chris. Really, it's nice, man. Thank you for having me on, honestly. Absolutely, absolutely. Ross, tell the audience about yourself, what you do, where you're from. It's your time. You get me all nervous now. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Um, Been all around, born in Minnesota, uh, raised as a kid in Arkansas, pops moved up to New York, so that was my second home. Uh, spent half my time there, moved up permanently 12 years ago to New York, spent a couple years in LA. Did acting, did writing, fell into rap music. Um, I mean, I can go into the details, but just to keep it short, now I'm here. You know what I mean? For better or worse, I would say for better at this point. You know? Absolutely, for better, for sure, my friend. Uh, Brooklyn, straight up, give a shout out to Brooklyn, though. It was oh yeah. Big bitch. You know, Queens now, but you know, gotta love the Brooklyn. Absolutely. You know? Um, you know, first thing I really want to talk to you about is just, um, you know, your creative process. You know, you are a person that has, you know, really transcended not just here, but you have kind of taken your music inter internationally. And I would just love to know about how you kind of came to be the artist that you are today and um, how you kind of transitioned that into kind of being more of an international based artist. Uh, I didn't always start out as a musician. Definitely not. Originally, I was doing... Um acting and I, my initial uh, outset was to be like a film director like I wanted to make movies like that was my main thing and I felt like in order to do that because obviously I grew up in a, in a situation where I didn't have money yeah you know, I didn't have money for film school or something like that so what did I want to do I grew up with you know those filmmaking auteurs uh, I mean I think I don't know if we have, you know we have the same era of like the heroes that we grew up with were like literally Spielberg and Coppola and Scorsese and Tarantino and like, you know what I mean? Where uh, it just gave you an aspect where these guys had to really put this shit together themselves. And it had to come from a really, really core structure of saying, this is what I want. How do I, you know, lay that out? Uh, so that was something that I really, really wanted to do and I believed in. Um, I didn't necessarily obviously have the right path of how to go about it, but I mean, that's always a journey in itself. So that's what really kind of put me on the path to do something. I came into music, uh, my music producer, also he's a family member of mine. Uh, he was in New York and moved out to LA. And I started doing uh, acting out there, like going to acting school and acting class and stuff like that. And like doing writing for comedy, not for anybody specific, like self-writing, working on that. And then uh, long story short, um, he called me uh, from New York and was like, I have a rapper, you know, he had a rapper on the label that his, his music label was like uh, his independent music label. And he was like, you know, he's no longer part of the label anymore. He's not working with us anymore. So now I've got all this music. What would you think about writing to it? And I was like, at the time, this is what, I don't know, almost, I gotta say like 12 years ago or something. And I was like, you know, I grew up with rap. Rap was in my veins as far as like being a hip hop head and listening to it, you know what I mean? But I was like, you know, I didn't really, I grew up in the gang, we grew up in the gangster era of rap, you know what I mean? So that meant something culturally from like, if you're gonna come with rap, you gotta say something about either where you're coming from or whatever. And I didn't really know if I could understand that balance at the time to where I could bring whatever I was bringing to the table. Cause rap now is very different, you know what I mean? Because it's less culturally based. I mean, a lot of it still is. You still have a lot of heads out there that are really getting hard, like Kendrick, J. Cole, you know, these cats, like whatever, Chance, um, Tyler, like, and I'm talking about the new age people, obviously from the, the, the legends of the old, of course, right. like, they're on the list. Uh, so that was also a process, but the writing aspect was so um, addictive. 
uh, for lack of a better word, the idea that I was like, when you're writing a sketch or when you're writing, um, you know, a script or something, you you have 30 minutes, you have 45 minutes, you have an hour. But when you're writing a track, you got like three minutes. You know what I mean? And you have to set, you have to give kind of the same impact and the same acting delivery or the same type of vocal or performance delivery of this here. And that was what was so alluring. And so that's what I got hooked on. And then uh, I wasn't feeling myself. It was, I'm definitely really, really, I think too hard on myself to be ever really like feeling myself in that way. But I started writing for a few months and then I called him and was like, you know, hey, maybe you want to listen to what I have and we can see. And he liked it. And then like, we just kind of went from there. So it was a very slow process, but I feel like the writing, uh, the initial point of when someone says they want to create something and like let that unfold, for me it was writing. Um, and then at that point it was learning how to perform it. Uh, that was true to me. I feel like that was the, the main thing that really outset everything that I'm doing now. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I mean, this the whole idea, obviously, of Canoe is the idea of collaboration and networking. So anytime that there's a person that could lend themselves to your story, we want to make sure that they get the opportunity they deserve to get that spotlight as well, you know, because the same way that, you know, you've been inspired and you were, you know, kind of molded to be the artist that you are right now, someone else could be sharing that same type of story with someone else. And, um, you know, one of the things I found very interesting that you were talking about was just how you transitioned in artistic skill set from kind of being someone that was more interested in film and, uh, you know, and how that kind of pivoted into your way of becoming, a, you know, a, music, a musician and an artist as well. Because um, I think that that is one of the things that we as a creative community share is that so many of us wear a lot of different hats, you know, we all kind of, you know, we have one main thing that we kind of really divulge our, all of our time into, but there's always other sub interests or other things that we can kind of also be really efficient at as well. Um, you know, how, how would you say though, like, you know, in the sense of, uh, being someone that was into directing and everything, have you been able to approach your music in a way that you've been able to scratch that itch as well? Like in the sense of like some of your music videos with Lucille Crew, have you been able to flex that, uh, creative side of you as well? Um, it, yes and no. Uh, I feel a lot more comfortable about it directing myself when I when I say directing myself I mean in regards to when I'm about to hit the stage or when I'm about to hit the mic like in the studio or even like freestyling because I you know I've, like I spent years like practicing on freestyle and stuff like that just to get like you know the versatility of vocabulary down and stuff like that and the dichotomy of switching between whether it be the beat or the lyrics or this or that um when I'm doing it live and I don't have to kind of Basically, if I don't have to look at myself or listen to myself afterwards, I feel a lot more comfortable about directing mm -hmm. myself. Yep. Because when I first started to write, uh, when I first started to write lyrics and stuff and putting it down, now there's some things, there's some like songs are like, all right, that's the, I know for a fact, I'm like, that's the third song I probably ever wrote. Mm -hmm. And I can step away from it and be okay with it. Like when I listen to it, and I hear, you know, whatever, I'm like, all right, cool, I wouldn't touch that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it was what it was at that time. Or then if anybody thinks about it, whatever, I can still be okay with it and walk away. There's certain things where I've listened to, even when I hear me talking about like, you know, whatever, uh, I can be like, uh, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you kind of feel like, I wish I would have said this or this, and that's fine. Uh, you, you, you work, you live, you learn, you earn, hopefully. Uh, I feel that when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing the process of writing the music, I would think if I was wanting to listen to this and it wasn't me, how would I want it to sound? You know? So then I kind of try to create, in a way I kind of like want to act like Snowflake like Black is somebody and I have to direct him and be like, you need to be like this. And I feel like almost like he's playing me. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, if you're going to be true to him, if you're going to be true to Ross, you got to do it like this. Right. You, know I mean? you got to do it like this to so where it comes off like this and you can't say it fake. You can't get on the mic and that shit sounds whack, or this shit sounds like uh, you're trying to be a rapper. If you're trying to be a rapper, you're gonna fail. Right. So I'm very much approaching from that point of saying, this is what I do before I get on the mic. Now, sometimes I can just get on and be like, this is what I feel, and I don't give a fuck if anyone cares about this, if they think it's whack, if they think it's dope, if they think it's whatever. Right. I wrote, you know, 
some of my stuff that I would be having on Lucille or whatever, I wrote like in 10 minutes or five minutes or something like that. We just did it and like get on it because I was feeling the track or whatever. And that, you know, inspiration always comes from different directions. Also, I have the pleasure to work with really, really talented musicians, and, you know, in Lucille and an incredible producer in Lucille. So that alone really like fuels me as well. But I do think that in the writing aspect, I like to step away to say, whatever you have to do just has to be authentic. Right. And even if it's not what you feel is your best, it could be someone else's favorite, it could be someone else's, and not to get too subjective to that. So I try not to get too much in my head, but I do kind of want to say, you know, I do kind of want to like take a look in a way. And then because I'm like, after I do it, I don't want to look at it again. Right. You know, I can look at it from this point now and be like, I want to do X, Y, and Z mm -hmm. so that I know I'm giving it my best. But once I do that and it's out, like I could, I could really go without listening. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> You know I'm the same I mean? way. I'm the same way. Man, Absolutely. I could really, you know, sometimes I do, and I'm just like, please, man, will you stop? You know what I mean? And like, other people <laughs> may love it, but I'm yeah. like, you know, I'm past it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, the whole thing about like uh, the collaboration process is just an amazing thing. And the fact that you come from a music group of such a, a array of like different type of people and musicians and producers, um, you know, we definitely want to know a little bit about a Lucille you know, crew, how you got involved with them and, you know, the type of things that you guys are doing these days. For sure. Um, and first thing, because uh, uh, I kind of feel that you have this idea and, and not to put you on the spot, but I feel like it seems like collaboration is really important to you. Absolutely. And as a personal artist, I feel that real, real growth is in collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I, and that can be very, very different types of stages than what different artists are used to. There's not one way about collaboration in any right. regard. Collaboration could be a therapist. Collaboration could be, you know, somebody that you go work out with. Collaborate, like whatever mm -hmm. gives you an insight to look into somebody else's perspective. Right and how they can possibly view what you're capable of. You know what I mean? That alone allows for a sense of mentorship. It doesn't mean that that person's your guide. It doesn't mean that that person is, you know, you have to follow that person. But I do feel that if you if you specifically say, I wanna do certain things to one way, which doesn't mean that that can't work. But I do feel that any one type of perspective creates a dogma that creates a type of one-way sense of thinking and maybe it's a certain way that can always work for you okay but i do feel that for the for the most optimum sense of growth you do need outside perspectives to look you need to take opinions even if you don't agree with them you need to take opinions you need to take you know the yeses you need to take the noes you need to take people that feel your shit the people that don't feel your shit so i feel like collaboration really really i mean listen in this case for me just to be the most diplomatic uh Collaboration really, really helped me um, and just seeing other aspects and inspired me to really like up my game, you know, put it to the next level with what other musicians were doing. I got involved in Lucille, my best friend, shout out to my man Isco, what's up, if he sees it. Uh, my best friend, I used to work as a, uh, like a long time ago, as a, uh, we, I did some like, you know, side work as a bartender and I was talking to my boy and uh, he was like, uh, he was like, yo, um, what you doing on September 20th? And we were opening up the spot, you know what I mean? And I was like, yo, September 20th is my birthday. Why, what's going on, you know? And he was like, uh, I have a homeboy of mine coming into town and we're going into a Wu-Tang Clan concert in Brooklyn. Now, I don't know if you remember when the album of Better Tomorrow came out, when Wu-Tang came back together mm -hmm. in 2014. Um, so they had reunited and I knew the album was out and I, I copped it. I didn't really go through all of it yet, but I had just copped it. Uh, so they were promoting a better tomorrow and I had no idea that they were coming back together. Right. Like all of them, like all eight <laughs> on my birthday. So I felt like it was a sign from like the Wu gods. <laughs> the Wu gods. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I usually don't impose on things, but he was like, yo, my boy and I are going to the Wu-Tang and I was like, nah, motherfucker. We, yeah, we are going, absolutely. I was like, you don't even have to sit with me, bro. I'm going to that concert. Yeah. So he was like, yo, it's my boy. He's a producer in Israel. And he brought it up. He later told me he brought it up because he was like, he knew that the vibes were going to be right. Because mm -hmm. I had already done music at the time. I'd done like, I think like two albums, solo albums. Um, and so we met like on my birthday. So like, you know, I got the ticket. We meet up early at my boy's house. 
we blow it down. You know, I'm talking with, uh, his name is, by the way, so because we're gonna be speaking about him, is Gav Dotan. He's the producer and head of Lucille Crew. He's, I mean, now he's like family to me. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, it's been years now that we've been together. Uh, so, so yeah, it was 2014. Uh, Lil' Kim was there. Mm -hmm. uh, Bone Thugs crushed it, you know what I mean? And then like Wu came in. Uh, so everything was dope. So Gev had a few more days left here in New York and was like, yo, why don't you come to the studio and let's, you know, let's fuck around and see what whatever, right? Right. So I come, I drop a verse. You know what I mean? I wrote something like, you know, I drop a verse, whatever. Right. And basically he goes back to Israel. He hits me up like a month later and was like, yo, this is what I have with you. And what it ended up being was the bum, 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 what you saw me do in Jerusalem. Yeah. It's that track. Oh, like, wow. The video and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm listening to the trumpets now on it. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, you know, what you have is like dope. And he was like, I'm going to put the rapper I have in Lucille at the time, uh, Rebel Sun, that's his name, you know, respect. And Rebel Sun's going to get on the second verse. So I was like, all right, cool. So he gets on the second verse and then afterwards I get another call like we, we kept in touch but like you know there was a call I got maybe like a month or two later where he was like listen this song is going to be the next release the single on our second album because at that point they only had one album out so he's like the second album is about to drop this is going to be the single and so he was like would you like to come out and perform and you know I'd never been to the Middle East I ain't been to Israel before and I was like Yo, yeah, fuck you. Like, <laughs> Why like, not? I ain't gonna say no to that. So, exactly. you know, so I went out there and it was a whole new, different experience to me. But at the same time, it was such a, it was such a um, blessing to see that an entirely different part of the world vibe the same way that you and I would vibe. Man, mm -hmm. it was just about good feelings, good vibe, great music. It, right. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's this massive misconception about the Middle East, bro. People are people, man. Like, you mm -hmm. good music, good foods, good food, good times, mm -hmm. good times. Absolutely. And I went over there and everybody was so warm and so nice and so welcoming. And, you know, what became, what was foreign for me became so, uh, just so accepted and so, so uh, familiar, very, very cool. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so we did like, you know, we did like a small tour out there. And then from there, uh, Isgov would come to New York like every year. And he mm -hmm. would usually come around my birthday, almost like to commemorate our time. So we would always record whether I was, right. in, you know, so we'd always record the music. And we're very, I think we work very, very well together because we get each other like our chemistry of like, he's coming with something. And I'm like, like we talked about inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, that's dope. You know what I mean? It's almost like mm -hmm. when you know when you can make jokes with one of your boys, right. and he drops a dope ass line, or like a funny joke, and then you want to make him laugh, so you say some tight shit. Yeah, yeah, it's the back and forth. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we always had that kind of chemistry. So mm -hmm. we work very quickly together. So when he would come, he may have like a week in New York, but we can do like enough to set a base to where next time I'm in Israel, I would base it. You know what I'm saying? And then like eventually I was on the third album, and then like it just got to the point where that was just a constant thing I, then i became like the capadonna kind of thing you know what i mean then it was like right. i was an official part of the mint like of the crew right. but i wasn't like i wasn't the front man yet you know right. what i mean of so course. it happened like that you know what i mean that's the best way i can say it absolutely that's a bro i mean that's such a really cool way of just meeting somebody the fact that you met them on your birthday uh, watching one of your favorite rap groups just kind of come out and kill it that just like you said it was it was meant to be it was meant to happen the way it happened and kind of put your life on a trajectory that you know it's on right now um you know you know you guys just released an album in february slow burn you know out by lucille crew uh and that was obviously right before COVID hit and you have such an incredible story of this year um that our your boy our boy antonio kind of you know introduced me to shout out to him uh for kind of making this this uh this meeting possible right now um but this is kind of how i got introduced to you and your brand and you know your music uh, when he started telling me about what happened to you on, you know, during this whole COVID period. So I'll let you explain it, you know, the best way you can. Yeah, you know, um, it's th th for me personally, and I kind of feel like it's it's so interesting me telling this story, like my personal story with the whole COVID situation, because I mean, just, just respect and love to everybody that's been through the trials and tribulations during this right. time. You know, everybody has the journey, everybody has their story. And anytime, I, I think I had for a minute, 
that I didn't want to talk about my personal struggle with it mm -hmm. because I didn't want anything I was saying publicly to overshadow what I knew other people had seen. Like, you know, there's people that have lost their homes, you know what I mean? Like loved ones, however, and everybody has their own personal tragedies and triumphs in this time. And I never wanted to kind of be that dude in the public light to, to, to say whether or not I was uh, suffering from this time or not. But I do feel that like personal expo uh, uh, explaining a lot of this stuff and just getting it out as a therapy in itself. The reason I'm saying that is because, um, so we had just released the album and I was already back in New York, uh, Slow Burn, which came out in February. Now, from my recollection, COVID hadn't really hit here. Mm -hmm. I think it was already making its way from, this is just, I mean, Correct. I don't know if like they're extremely accurate, but it was making its way from Europe on the way to Over. New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the time. Um, my cousin that I grew up with, he was the same age as me. He was a few months younger than me. He's like a brother to me, uh, passed away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't want to go necessarily, that's another story in itself, but I had to take a trip back down to, you know, the hometown I grew up, like to pay my respects to his mom and everything like that. Uh, and then in the meantime, I was supposed to get ready for this tour, which was like a day away. Like, so I'm dealing with this and the next day I'm having to leave to the tour. Now it, it gets crazy. I mean, like some people don't even believe it. His older brother got into a car wreck the day that I was supposed to leave and they had to amputate his leg. So I got oh, one man. cousin that lost his leg, the other mm -hmm. cousin that lost his life. Yeah. And I'm trying to emotionally deal with that while I fly back to New York. And then the next day, I got to get on a fucking plane to get to uh, to get over to Israel to do this tour. Right. But I got to drop that when I get on stage. I got to drop that when mm -hmm. I get, or I got to mask it. You know what I mean? Also, right. like, in respect to my crew, my crew needs to know, because now I'm the front man. Because long story short, between what happened with me with the uh, Slow Burn, between Slow Burn and the last album, their last rapper, it obviously did, it didn't work out with, you know, you know what I mean? Like he got, he left the group and then I now became the new rapper, which meant that um, I had to write, you gotta understand, I wasn't about to rap his his lyrics on, and this guy's been on three albums. Right. I can't come and rap his lyrics. So the whole year before that is when I became the rapper for their crew and went on tour, which meant I had to rewrite the entire discography with my lyrics now and wow. i had four days to do it because we had, tour, we had a tour in india so i wrote about 15 14 to 16 songs in four days and i had to memorize that shit before we got to india that's a whole nother story now in that time where we were touring and i'm like going to we're going to germany we're going to switzerland we did the ziggit festival we're going to budapest we're going to you know back to germany we're going to israel i'm like basically coming in as the front man, you know, right. and we also have the lovely and amazing shout out to my sister Gal De Paz. Um, she's the singer in the group and it's she's absolutely crazy. She was like my big sis on this, you know what I mean, as far as like me coming into the fold, you know, as far as performing on stage, getting my skills right. Like she was there with me every step of the way. Right. I would, I'm a better artist because I right now, I mean, with his gap as well, but like unbelievable, unbelievable artist. Um, She's the front woman, she's like the pizzazz of it. And then I gotta come in with my, you know, whatever Brooklyn swag I'm trying to bring mm -hmm. right. and memorizing that shit. So it was a task. Um, and on top of that, you know, bringing the same flair that Lucille Crew had in the years past, but being a different rapper. It's like if you're playing, if you're the new dude playing James Bond, people don't need to forget that you're playing, that you're James Bond, regardless yeah. of whether or not you're a different actor. Right. You bring your own stuff, but don't, you don't change the, you don't change the formula, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right. So that with, with my own lyrics and everything like that. So in the time that we were touring the year before, we were writing the new album. Oh, I see. So like we, we were writing while, while we were touring. So by the time February came, the reason I brought that up is by the time February came this coming year with the whole thing with my cousin and stuff, I had to be in gear because this is the first album that me, Gal and his Gev and Yossi, the drummer, like we all wrote that together. And like right. this is the time like I was pinning the album with them. You know what I mean? So right. I needed to have full focus. Right. And you know, it, it was, it marked like the new era of what our group was doing. Like now it's me as the front man and like, you know, we're pushing this forward and what's the new direction and like, you know, how are people gonna receive it? We get there, COVID hits, we did two shows. You saw the on top video, mm -hmm. that was, that was, the performance we did 
mm. to launch the tour. I see. COVID happens, tour canceled, bro. Lockdown, I'm there, it's three weeks, we can't do nothing, nothing's open, nothing's pouring down rain. Like, I get back here, and bro, remember when it was March, bro, it was like, I got back, cause I got back to New York. When I left, it was a different New York. I get yeah. back to New York, bro, it's like, I am legend. <laughs> like, yeah. Clinton, was there nobody in the airport? Nobody yeah. was in the subway? I felt like I'm sitting here walking around. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Dude, I've never in my life seen New York like that. Yo, I mean, it was like, it's crazy. I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. It was so yeah. surreal. You know, yeah. and this was like the world we came back to. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And so, from that point, it was just trying to re gear, and then it was just to to even get back there was an even crazier story. Yeah. You know? But a lot of it was a, a lot of it was mental trials and tribulations. And I'm not gonna lie, man. It, 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 you still go through it day by day. I'm better mm-hmm. now, but it took. You know, it took a while because I was like, you know, you lose your job as far as your, career, you know, your career. The album doesn't get pushed. Your family members gone. Your other family members uh, lost, like, you know, a limb. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it's all family. at once. So, and I didn't want to be that guy to be like, oh, look at all these things. Woe is me? Because everybody's got their own journey and they got their. But because right. I didn't talk about it, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, over time that shit will bubble up inside you, man, and mm-hmm. that can, that can. It can rupture you if you don't let the air out. You know right. what I mean? So, I mean, it is what it is. And I don't mean that to scoff at anything that ever happened. And that's, that also goes for, my, you know, my love and respect for anybody going through it right now, man. The struggle's real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think that the story itself, as tragic as it sounds, I think it says a lot about your character and your ability to kind of persevere through the things that are, you know, would in a lot of cases derail some people from the things that they're trying to do. So I shout out to you for, you know, really trying to push through it and make it still happen, you know. Um, you know, like, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I, we, I think we've all been there and not, you know, not exactly in those same shoes because this is such a unique situation, but been there in a sense, just saying that, you know, there's always been times for most creators where it's just like everything seems to all be hitting you all at once, you know, and the, at those moments is really when we have to really look inside and remember why it is that we work so hard to establish ourselves and whatever it is that we were trying to do and uh and make sure that we keep our eye on the prize and not give up i think that it's a beautiful segue into my final question you know and just to ask you like what you know what's next you know it could be summed up in those two words you know like what's the plan for you for lucille crew how are you guys adapting to you know hopefully what i hope would be a better year coming up you know with the premise of maybe a vaccine coming on uh have you guys kind of considering what you guys might start trying to do next um, I can't really expose too much, but we do have new material that's going to be dropping soon. Awesome. Uh, even though we have like, you know, the album Slow Burn for those listening, check it out. Uh, but we do have some new material that'll be coming out soon. Shout out to my man, David Mayan, who's also on the album. He's an incredible MC, uh, Israeli MC. It's all in Hebrew, what he's got, but it, his lyrics are crazy. Um, so the way, the reason I brought that up is it's really all about in this time of days, it's about uh, adaptability. It's about seeing where you go like honestly it's like southpaw you know what i mean yeah. i can't think of one formation of saying this is the way that we're going to do this i just mm-hmm. need to see what is coming my way and we right. just switch styles uh but the point is is like literally gearing up in any way shape or form to be ready for that um i'm ready to hit back and be there as soon as possible and if it's not there i'm ready to be in europe if ready to be in new york i don't care we're both we're all ready like the crew is ready um we just want to attack on all sides. The main thing right now is if you got to stay in your house because you want to be safe, stay safe, listen to the music. We're yeah. going to have more of it, you know what I mean, and gear up for that. And by the time that it's in the safest way for everybody to enjoy it, we'll all enjoy it together. Whether if I need to go to Europe, whether we need to go to Israel, whether we need to come to New York, bring it to Brooklyn, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, so man. it's just about adaptability. I just want everybody to be safe. We all have a good time. And like the music's going to keep coming. It's not going to stop. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so yeah, that's the best thing I can say. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, well said, bro. Well said. You know, obviously, yeah. we wish you guys the best. Uh, you know, I know that you guys are gonna come out on top at the end of all this. So I really appreciate your time, Ross, aka Snowflake Black. You know, my man, coming through and talking to the people today. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Listen, man, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure, man, to give me the the, the time just to like wrap it up with you and just get to talk in general, man. I really appreciate it, man. And, and shout out to the people that you also give the time to like be on your channel and like, you know, put their voice out and everything else. Like, cause honestly, we need cats like you anyways. You know what I mean? Thank you, so thank you man. Uh, yeah, man, but uh, that's going to be it for this episode of my people of the Canoe Creative Spotlight. Once again, I'll shout out my man Ross Allen, a.k.a. Snowflake Black. Make sure you check out all his stuff, Lucille Crew, and the links we provided below. You know, we, you know what you need you guys to do. We need you to subscribe. We need you to comment. We need you to like this video. Pass it on. Make sure you download Canoe at www.creatorsnearyou.com. And you know what we're going to tell you. Make sure you always connect, collab, create. Peace. Thank you.